Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Diego Barrera and I'm a professional football soccer player here in Thailand. On this video I'm going to talk about where I've played, how I came to play professional and how I got to Thailand. And I'm also going to give you tips on how to find a team in Thailand. Um, this is where I live. It's an enclosed neighborhood. I lived here for two years. They call it a village. And yeah, check it out. contract and also how I came to Thailand. It all starts with this this classic team right here. This classic shirt. That's my club team growing up through all the years since I came to the States when I was U12 to you know U18. SoCal United. The team is now called Real SoCal. One of the top clubs in the country. The coach was Alberto Brew back then and basically it probably has the most the team that most made an impact on my development growing up we won the national title under 16 uh, i got the golden boot you know golden years right here so after that the next level in the state team odp olympic development program the best players of the state make a state team uh, California split into two because it's so big, so Cal South, I made that team. We also won a national title with the state team. The next level is regional team. The United States is divided by it into four. The Southwest states, it's region four. So I, you know, all the states of that region play a tournament. They pick the best players to make the regional team. I made the regional team, uh, we went, I remember going to Costa Rica my first year and then later I went to Germany. Uh, the next level after that is the highest level, the national team. I played under 18 national team for, for USA and that's just the, the greatest time, the highest level. I remember going to Portugal for a, a tournament and prepare us for a big tournament that we joined in Northern Ireland called the Milk Cup one of the biggest tournaments in the world for youth soccer, youth football. It was Brazil, USA, Serbia, Montenegro and Northern Ireland, the host. Being able to put on that jersey with the representing your country, a country, it is another level. Uh, it is so much pride and joy to be able to, you know, cheer USA before you play a game. It is, never experienced anything like that, it's amazing. I remember we made it to the finals of this tournament um, against Northern Ireland, the host country. Unbelievable. We ended up winning 4-1, 4-2, I think. Um, first time for the USA to win that tournament. Just over the moon. So speaking about the national team, I have my jersey right here. A, a jersey. This is actually from... This is a recent jersey, not 2005 when I played under 18. This is a beach soccer national team. 
I played in 2013. So I also played for the beach soccer national team. And I'll put it on. Ready? Boom. Uh, next up, uh, I got a scholarship to university. Went to Loyola Marymount Uni uh, University, a private school in Los Angeles. My, my senior year, I checked out a big state school, which I always wanted to, and I went to University of New Mexico, the Lobos. So after university, I was playing semi-professional, you know, now I'm ready to play professional. This is my dream. This is what I do. I know I can. What do I do? Where do I go? I'm playing PDL, Premier Development League, is the semi-professional league in the United States. 2007, I joined Ventura County Fusion. It was their first year. At the end of the season, we played Everton from the English Premier League. A friendly, unbelievable experience. I remember Arteta, PNR, you know, Tim Howard was in goal, American at the time. Next season, I played at San Fernando Valley Quakes. Oh, and I'm playing against my brother for the first time. He was playing in Ventura uh, for the first time ever to play competitively. Uh, yeah, I have a younger brother. He's three years younger. He plays professional as well. Uh, right now in Division Two in the United States. Um, after that, I played in uh, Hollywood Hitman, another semi-professional, same league. Uh, one of the very few teams in the semi-professional that give out a contract. The next season, I play another PDL team. I, I, go, I play in Ventura again. Yeah, after that, after contacting many teams, many, you know, over two, three years, just contacting, trying, playing, playing men's leagues, uh, you know, playing as much as possible everywhere. I'm, I just need to play and I need to keep trying. I remember playing in men's league and it started La Máquina, uh, it is in Los Angeles, you know, very competitive. I, I, I played for Esperanza, I played for this Catrachos team, uh, you know, every season, every tournament, something different. I played in Oxnard Durango for, you know, some time, uh, Cal FC. So after that, I finally found a team, my first professional team, which was? Wilmington, North Carolina, Wilmington Hammerheads in North Carolina. Let's get this on, yeah? Bam. So, Wilmington Hammerheads in North Carolina. Uh, I got here through the coach of the semi-professional team, Ventura County Fusion. He recommended me to his, he knew the coach over here. And I went and tried out. I'm impressed. I made the team. Awesome. First time I finally get in the USL, United Soccer League Pro. And this team's been around for a while. It has his history. Happy days. Happy days. Finally found my professional team after two, two to three years after university just playing and trying to just research and just hustle. Trying to find teams anywhere, abroad, come back, I would, Europe, back, I mean, men's league, semi-professional, anywhere I could play, I, I never stopped. I even signed with my, one of my best friends growing up from club, high school, we signed together at the same time, my buddy Dylan. You just can't write that stuff. First time professional in the team, same team, together ridiculous. Next season there was this team created, an amateur team but incredible players created to join the US Open Cup. I'm joining with my brother. This is the first time that we're joining a real tournament in the United States Open Cup together. And fairy tale story this team, Cal FC. We not only qualified to the US Open Cup but we made an incredible run that basically we made history. First round playing against Kitsa Pumas which is the defending champions of the semi-professional league. The chemistry between the players were off out of this world. That's what really made us successful. Notice the team was based out of my hometown Thousand Oaks, California. 
I was playing with my brother. Insane. First round, PDL defending champions. We go there, we give them a shock of a lifetime. We beat them 3 1. Second round, you wouldn't even believe this. Second round, Calusi against. Right? I'm pointing it right. Wilmington Hammerheads, my old team. In the Open Cup, US Open Cup round two. It's just, you just can't make that stuff up. I go back to Wilmington. I'm taking a sick team. My brother connection. We do the impossible and beat them 4 0. Swept them, mopped them. However, you want to say it. Shocked the world, really, because that, that's a professional team. We beat a professional team 4 0. I remember assisting my brother twice. Um, incredible. You can't write that stuff. Yeah, so we shocked the world. We were in round three against a first division major league soccer team against the Portland Timbers. David versus Goliath story. We should never win, but we do the impossible and beat them in double overtime 1-0. An amateur team beats a first division team. Well, the news goes around the world for a sec and we're playing round four against Seattle Sounders. We go there. I remember playing against Freddy Montero, who's a Colombian player, big time. We go there 0 0 at halftime. Oh, the tension in the crowd. Can they do it again? Second half, we get a handball in the box. We cause a penalty. They, they score it 1 0. They, they ended up scoring a, a few more. And we lost. But. History remains. The team was, was based out of my hometown, created by uh, Michael Friedman. You know, everything about that team was just incredible. And we made history. So, hell yeah. After that, I go to a camp for beach soccer team, the national team, beach soccer. There's a tournament going on in Brazil, and I made the team. My brother and I make the team. We're playing together now for a beach soccer national team for this tournament in Brazil. We play Brazil, Mexico, Argentina. Just legendary. After that, I have a contact, a uh, coach agent in Orange County who I talked to who has a contact in the Philippines. He sent my, my profile and my video. And I went and done deal. I, I, I got on the team. I'm in Asia. First division, that's what really was interesting me there. First division status in the Philippines. Uh, I played for Stallion, Stallion Football Club. At the time, like I said, I got halfway in the season. They were in the top. There, you know, two other teams were like right there behind them and were pushing for the championship. We get reinforcements. I join. I scored my first professional goal, a volley, incredible. Next season, I, I go home for a bit and I come back and play with this team, Team Socceroo. I just played with there for second round. After Socceroo, I went and played for Kaya FC. Very nice club, management, top class. We were champions of the cup, UFL Cup, beating the champions of the league and qualifying for for an international tournament in Asia. We're in the finals against the champion of the league. Full game, I get an assist. I get a goal in the finals. Oh, what a feeling to score in the final. They come back, we go to penalties, we win. Champions of the UFL Cup in the Philippines. So now I won the league and the cup in the Philippines, first division. But I've been here about Thailand, it's a football country, very well developed. I, 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 I gather a contact there who knows a, an agent, a Brazilian agent there, and after winning the league and the cup, you know, I already reached the highest possible in the Philippines. I, I'm ready for a new challenge and, and I go for it. I'm going to Thailand. I arrived Bangkok. I think January to 28th 
um, 2016 and when we meet up with the agent I find out that the situation is not exactly what I expected what I was told turns out I'm kinda late for the year uh, for signing um, I can get signed but it's already many teams are already full the first division it's closed for sure the second division is also full and that's where really where his connections come from and so I'm shocked uh, you know you let me come here and it, it's it's late so that was that was kinda tough so we're basically scrambling to look for a third division team you know I know I just need to find a team I will show and I will move up I will impress let's try to find a team so basically through the agent he's calling friends of friends and we're, we're scrambling to find any team and you know it was very stressful it was not not what I expected and it was just horrible you know you come here for something and that's not what you get so we do our best and we contact and kinda towards the end of my trip after like you know almost a month <laughs> looking and trying uh, you know one of the contacts throws a Hail Mary and you know last chance last moment type of thing a friend of a friend he knows uh, is playing on a third division team we contact him he says yeah we're looking for a winger uh, send your player okay here we go I show up I talk to that guy this is Brazilian is my he's now my friend um, and I'm playing I'm playing for my life now I, I show up on a Thursday I train Thursday Friday the coach is not there so I'm like oh my god but I'm able to talk to the president and I tell him my story and where I'm from and everything and Saturday we have a friendly game and he says Saturday the coach will be here he'll check you out so whew, there's trying to find a team is just an emotional roller coaster and you know it's really difficult mentally physically you name it but if this is what you want to do you just keep doing it and you keep going and you know you try try again until you're successful that's how you become successful so I'm playing in this game I'm going to play and I'm playing for everything I need to impress this guy I'm playing winger I think I play left wing and I just do what I do best you know I, I put in my head I really have to just beast it and show my level and take risk and just just no one's gonna stop me during the two days that I train there's another Korean there trying out for that position as well so you know there's interesting tension there and that's gonna be normal in Thailand just I just happen to be going against one guy there will be usually a lot more uh, but this is late one position two guys we're both playing wingers I'm right I'm left and I just show what I got I show my level my experience and there was a penalty and of course I go to take it and the Korean comes up and he says yeah I want to take it too we rock paper scissors for, scissors for it I win he goes shit in Korean Shiba and I score it but regardless of that goal I play really well I outplay him he actually did okay he kinda struggled and I'm just shiny I, I talk to the coach he says yeah I want you and uh, come to training and then after two days another day of training another friendly he says you know in this friendly so I wasn't even signed yet he he wanted he said okay I like you I I you know I want you to play one more game and then I'll decide so I'm one step in but not there yet and I thought man come on that should be it but you know signing someone you don't know for one game you know you never know he could have just had a great game you don't know this person so then I play again another friendly against a Division two team a higher level and I do the same thing I play really well and after that. I finally get signed. 
I have a meeting with the president and finally, finally, I get my first professional team in Thailand and here's a jersey. And let's get that on now. Got a team in Thailand. Not what I thought, not what I was expecting, but at least it's a place to start and show I'm in a football country, I'm, I'm stoked. I basically start on fire. I start scoring. I first We play a cup game, my first game was a cup game. I score and we, we go through, we win. Then I start playing the league, I start scoring. One goal here, two, go, two goals there. I'm assisting, like I'm just, I hit the ground running and couldn't be happier, they couldn't be happier with me and basically after a couple months my salary is raised. I basically finished the season top goal scorer of our region, of our league table because Division 3 has regions. It's like eight regions across Thailand. The first division is one table nationwide, second division one table nationwide and third division is regional. So I finished top goal scorer of my region. And first time for this team to have a top goal scorer. Oh, I'm not even, I didn't think I told you the team's name. KBU FC, Kasem Bunjit. And um, yeah, top goal scorer. So that was my first season. Uh, second season, I already other teams in that same league know me, other interests, uh, you know, come up, uh, but my team was not going to let me go, and basically they made an offer that I could not refuse, and instead of trying to pursue, you know, a test and, and trials in, in higher levels, it's just they made an offer I couldn't refuse, and you know, don't forget, there's promotion relegation here in Thailand, so that's their goal and they have a top goal scorer so they're investing there we're hoping to go up and yeah I stayed with the team this is actually the jersey of the second season number 10 that says it all I'm the main man playing 90 minutes every game I'm developing I'm getting more experience and I just I'm very happy so after two seasons here, I decide, you know, to, to try to move up. Um, I made contacts here already by then, so I try to move up and, you know, even though I'm getting a good deal here, even almost as good as they get paid in, in, in higher level, you know, money wasn't the important thing, I wanted to move up. I wanted to play somewhere a higher level. Um, I followed the contacts that I made here and unfortunately they told me that that's not how it works here. Um, if you want to play in the first division Thai Premier League you really they only get really high profile players. They they don't really even have trials. They just you know they do their scouting and they they'll offer a big contract to a player that's already playing in first division somewhere and then they bring them here. So, you know, it's a high level and there's a lot of money, so they're going to buy big players with big profile. They're playing Division 1 in Korea, K-League, J-League in Japan, uh, in Spain, 1st and 2nd Division, Brazil, 1st and 2nd Division, depending on what they can get. So, through a one agent, I was able to have a meeting with a coach to a recently promoted 1st Division team. So they're now first division status. I got finally got a face to face with the coach, and when he found out, you know, I told him I played for the national team and I played professional in the states. And once I found out that I played third division, he pretty much said, "No, I'm not interested." Regardless, I'm like, "Can can you can I show you? You know, I can I can play in this in this field in this level." And he lost interest. So. I realized first division here it's not gonna happen like that uh, they only get first you know high profile players and second division is it's almost the same um, you know players trickle down first division they go to second division 
and it's that's the system. First and second division are very high level, high profile players. So after keep searching and and keep trying, mainly in second division, after learning what how the first division is. I couldn't even get the chance to trial. I couldn't get the chance to even get on the field because there's so much competition. There's so many players that you know have played first division, second division in Thailand, and here I am. I played third. It just didn't happen. I couldn't. I couldn't get a test. I couldn't get a trial, and that was pretty disappointing for sure. I find a team that just got recently relegated from second division to third. Uh, they're a good professional team and through my contacts I'm able to go there there's about a month left and and I go there and start testing we 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 play first division team uh, on a friendly and I do really well I go to their stadium first division stadium and and I impress the coach he really likes me you know, he's playing like a wing or striker and he says he wants to sign me. We talk salary and he says, okay, I'll talk to the boss. So, great. I'm thinking, okay, this third division is a good team. Just had a bad season last year. Uh, got recently relegated, but you know, it's promotion relegation. Everyone wants to get back up. This team is going to fight for promotion in third division. So I keep training. I tell him, okay, so what did he say? The contract ready? He said, oh, he told us all to wait. Uh, and just wait. So I keep waiting and I keep waiting and I, I, I follow up again. He's like, yeah, he's, he's, he's told us to wait. None of us has contracts yet. Um, even the coaches, you know, like we're just all waiting to sign. That's a, that's a red flag. A couple weeks of that, I said, you know, there's days. I think two. Two, two, three days, the, the last weekend, where the, 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 the transfer window closes, or the signing window closes. I called the, or the, I called the coach, and he finally says, I just, I just talked to the boss. He said he couldn't secure the sponsor. He was trying to figure it out this whole time. That's why he told us to wait. And he, he couldn't sign foreigners, and he couldn't get that coaching staff that he wanted. Because we had a a team to push for promotion with that coaching staff and the foreigners that we got but he couldn't afford them the play the you know they didn't get the sponsorship so you know you can imagine the roller coaster of emotions I've been through um, and now I'm two days away from my from not I didn't find a team I'm two days away I, I, I thought I had a team and I couldn't find it and unfortunately that happened so you know, just complete disappointment upon that phone call, stress, devastating really, um, until literally the last, the last day I get a call from another team that I played against last season uh, with this team. Um, like I said before, you know, I did really well so people got to know about me so they were you know interest so this team um, called me because they're also making last minute <laughs> signings they're making a new project so they took them a while so then I go on a friendly game on a Sunday and I play well and I sign last minute like no joke last minute um, on a third division team uh, on my third season here well that day was insane imagine you can imagine playing on the last day and the last friendly and the last chance to secure your your team and it's just crazy it's not it's not easy it's not easy it's not all s sunshine and rainbows um, I don't even know if that's the right term uh, but yeah you're gonna go through moments, you know, if you think trying to find a team playing abroad is easy, let me tell you, you you will be pushed and tested like you've never been before and, and, and you'll be kicked down and and 
rejected or whatever the reason is it's it's really a crazy crazy job and for, I finally signed in my last minute I was very relieved um, I'm gonna be able to play and and this team Defo FC I played against them so they know me so I start playing I start playing the first month it's you know across town so I'm commuting we play, you know, the first month, four games. Um, in the third game, uh, I get the team's first goal and first assist against the top team. We get our first draw. We happen to lose the first two. Um, you know, we just got to put a new team together. It was a new project. Um, so I, I kick off our, our points, our goals, and basically payday comes first payday and the payday is not there yet when it's supposed to be so I talk to them they're like it's a little late wait this week so then I train this the, that, that week and then pay still doesn't come and it's finally weekend time game time and I say look I'm not gonna play if you don't pay me like you can't just oh wait no that's not how it works so then I had just had a good performance also so they you know they want me to play they need me to play so they said okay look we just haven't sponsored it's delayed whatever here's like sixty percent of your salary just for this weekend and we need you to play uh, the rest is delayed just wait till next week so I'm like okay I'm reasonable. I'll give you a chance. So I play, we play a, a top team, another top team back to back, and we tie 0 0. I play striker 90 minutes. Um, man, I love that. I want to play striker. Um, got a real good opportunity towards the end, a header rebound that the goalie made huge save and 0-0 we still get a our, our second result of the of the season against a good team so it was good week rolls by the salary doesn't come the rest of my salary doesn't come and you know word gets around and other uh, local players still haven't got theirs nothing yet so you know just red flag turns out you know they're sponsored they don't really have one yet and they've been talking to but you know league started and they don't have a sponsor yet locked down so you know just this team just terrible experience and basically I told them look you're gonna now pay me in advance for me to play you want me to play this month pay me my salary first then I'll play that was my only condition and obviously they they couldn't do it and that was just disappointing you know and and my the, the president the boss of my old club of this club warned me about these people and you know I told them you know crazy crazy stuff happened I, I didn't really have a choice and you know to sign this at the last day like come on at, at least I found a team uh, but yeah so Unfortunately, slowly but surely, other team left. I left that first month after my, you know, first salary not complete, and then next month other foreigners left that they thought, you know, I'll wait if they're telling the truth. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. So at the end of the day, at the end of the season, they got relegated um, because of these problems. But anyway, so. After my first month, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not gonna spend time and energy and to to hope these people figure it out. So I stopped playing, and then on transfer window, um, you know, through all my contacts, they found out I was free, and they said this team is gonna push for players. They're investing, but it's in T4, in Thai in, in Thai League Four, fourth division. They gave me a good deal because they're trying to go up. This is the thing in promotion relegation in a football country. You got 
fourth division who will invest have professional system everything staff therapy you know everything that the first and second division have they're just they want to go up that's how it works you'll invest you get good players good foreigners so that was one of those teams um, and it was in the province of Pizza Nulo. Pizza Nulo is how you say it. Um, Northern Thailand. And I went. This team has a lot of history. They played in Division 2 before. One, some of the best fans in Thailand back in the day when they were at their highest. Um, and, you know, it was, it was great. Um, we're pushing for players uh, for playoffs. They fell behind. They had some unlucky results. I go in there to help. They got a couple more players for the second round of the season of this last season that I just experienced. And um, I go there and I start banging in some goals. Um, I finish. Uh, six goals in nine games in the second round and we just missed the playoffs just just missed it we have one bad result against the team that we didn't couldn't have a bad result and it was just one of those days our, our, our captain got a known goal which is really unlucky but I scored I even scored that game we lost 2-1 um, but what an experience I'm playing in a provincial for the first time uh, in the province team, uh, big fans, night games, media, perfect. I mean, it felt like a professional team, and it's a, it's a it's a division four. So crazy ride here in Thailand, crazy crazy ride to to look for teams. And you know, always remember. I don't know if I mentioned this yet. You know, the rule is three foreigners from any countries, one spot for an Asian player and one spot for ASEAN, which is Southeast Asian player, Southeast Asian passport basically. So you know the competition everywhere is really tough. As a foreigner in a country, as an import player, you're playing, you need to be the best player. They, they're getting players for them to score the goals and be their goal scorer, be their superstar to get them promoted like that's the foreigners that they they're looking for so you know keep that in mind wherever you go you're a foreigner you have to be the best and that's the kind of mentality that I've that I've gained here playing in Thailand you have to be the difference maker the coaches would tell me you decide the game okay I need you to decide the game and it has helped me tremendously as a player. It has, like I said, changed my mindset. And that is the value of playing abroad, playing in Thailand, playing in a football country, that you get to play 90 minutes and you have the pressure to, to be the main man, you just gain, gain more experience and you become a better player for later go back to your home country which that would be my plan like promised I'm gonna give you tips on how to find a team in Thailand before let me change to my last team Ready? so like promised I'm gonna give you tips on how to find a team in Thailand uh, tip number one make a highlight video. If you don't have a highlight video it is very important for you to make one. Uh, if you're playing in games that are not being videotaped you hire someone, ask a friend, take them out to lunch, whatever you need to videotape that game. And hopefully also gives you the mentality to play well and, and make good plays to, so your videotape is good as best as it can. That's tip number one. Tip number two, use the internet towards your advantage. So before you would come to here, to, to Thailand, use the internet, search third and fourth division, and, um, 
and send your highlight video. Be straightforward. Tell them, um, um, tell them who you are, where you play, and tell them I want to come. To, can I come test? Uh, and hopefully with the highlight video, they'll be interested, and you might get a lead before you come to Thailand. Tip number three is save money and come to Thailand. <laughs> um, hopefully with the groundwork of sending your highlight video to many all teams, many or all teams in third and fourth division, you might get a lead. Uh, but more importantly, if some people just post randomly in their Facebook pages, um, open tryouts. So that's open for anyone. So you just need to be here. Now, I, can, I told you who, what to search, but more importantly, when would you come here? You need to be here now, as in November, December. I'm doing this now in November. Uh, the league starts February, first week of February, so in January is preseason. Most teams will be settled. Not all. Some will have one spot that they still haven't locked down. And, you know, sometimes they're ready to make a decision because time is coming. Uh, but if you want to give yourself a good chance, November, December is the right time to be here. And those are the three tips that you need to know before coming to Thailand. Make a highlight video, contact teams in 3rd and 4th division before you come, and send your highlight video, tell them if you can trial, and three, save money and come here and make it happen. Now, here's a bonus round on how to make a team get the contract in Thailand. I gave you the tips on how to find one. Now I'll give you teams through my experiences, what I know, what's the best shot for you to actually make the team. Uh, number one, you have to come fit and you have to come in good form. This is a football country. People will notice that could be said for anyone, but you know, you're a foreigner. Remember, you're a foreigner in a country where they, they, they pick only the best and you had the competition is very high so you want to give yourself a best chance by by being fit number two and probably the most important is score goals if you're an attacking player you can get any team if you score goals that's what they really love here especially in third and fourth division you can have all the moves you can be fancy you can have good passes but if you're not scoring eh, they're not really sure but if you're pretty decent and you score goals they're they're ready they're ready to sign you so goals are very huge because the foreigners are the ones that are gonna give you the victory the ones that are gonna decide the game like they tell me all the time and number three whenever you are at those trials make sure you talk to other people talk to other foreigners talk to their agents talk to the people outside you're in the football world everyone's there for trials so there's agents you know watching their players sending their players so be brave make contacts talk to people that will lead you to the next team to the next trial sometimes you know the first and second trial don't go your way it's just a game you got 20 minutes you got 45 minutes you're still not fully fit it helps you in preparation for the next one and I've seen it happen and that's the bonus tip round <laughs> thank you for watching that that was interesting to make it wasn't easy please like share and subscribe this video subscribe to my channel this is just this beginning this, my other videos you can check out by clicking them around here somewhere I'll try to put them yeah subscribe this is only the beginning now after my intro and my story now I can start showing you about Thailand and, and some football and it'll be interesting subscribe thanks bye